Bible prophecy warns of a flesh man coming on the scene with supernatural powers that he got from the devil. Well, he will use these supernatural powers to do miracles in the sight of men, and these miracles he will use to fool the entire world into thinking that he's God or Jesus Christ or try to replace Christ. Let me tell you about the mark of the beast and the Antichrist real quick. The Antichrist is going to be somebody that's going to be a hundred times worse than Hitler but when he starts out he's going to be a beautiful speaker uh, mesmerizing in appearance and a man of peace that's how he's going to present himself and he's going to unite all the world's religions under him and he's going to pretty much form a religious dictatorship that will kill anybody that doesn't bow down to him first on his list will be to kill Christians to take the place of Jesus Christ and the claim that he's God. He's going to sit in the temple over in Jerusalem and pretend to be God. Well, his system is going to be financial, economic, and all that. And you won't, be, you won't be able to be a part of that system unless you take an oath to him and reject all your former faiths like Christianity and whatever else you believed in. And if you ain't willing to do that, they'll threaten your family and threaten your kids and threaten your mom to kill them first in front of you and then kill you. But if you're a Christian, you know that you got to stick with Christ no matter what, even if it means death, because Christ died for us. He gave us his all, you know, just so we can have a chance to live with him in heaven. So this uh, Mark of the Beast and Antichrist, it has teeth behind it because in 1991, these laws were introduced to the U.S. from the Sanhedrin called the Noahide Laws. And it's seven of them. But as you go deeper into these Noahide Laws, one of the tenets is... If you will not renounce Jesus Christ, the penalty is death because worshiping Jesus Christ to the Sanhedrin and the Noahide laws is considered idolatry. And so they'll murder you. These, the Sanhedrin is the same guys back in the Bible days that conspired against and murdered Jesus because they were jealous of Jesus because Jesus was like an innovator. You know, where they was all about that religion and exploiting people. But Jesus Christ came with the true faith, which was a family, family based doctrine where you have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, and Jesus Christ is the Son. He's our Redeemer, He's our Healer, He's our everything. And He came to earth from heaven to show us how to do it. And the difference between him and all these other false gods is Jesus Christ is the only God that said he wasn't too good to die for his servants. So he left his throne in heaven and came down here and died. Took our penalty on the cross because we were sinners and we were worthy of whatever punishment we were supposed to get by the bad things we've done. But Christ said, you know what, Father? I'll take their punishment for them. And if they follow me, I'll, I'll lead them to heaven. So leave them in my hands so Christ is like our lawyer our defender our everything because Satan all he does is accuse us of all, accuse us of all the bad things we do he's like hey God look at what they're doing they're just like me so I get to take them into hell but Christ said hey if they follow me my blood is on them so they're mine and I can take them with me to heaven so that's what the deal is with Jesus Christ and this mark of the beast and Antichrist system this Antichrist figure he's gonna have supernatural powers and all that he's gonna have everything that he needs from the devil to fool mankind but just know if you're a Christian you can't go along with him just to save your life or to eat or anything like that because if you do God will reject you and you won't be able to go to heaven so you have to hold on no matter how hard it gets so it's letting everybody know about the Antichrist and the beast system alright guys make the right choice God bless you and I love you I'm going to read from the book of Revelation, chapter 3, verse 7. And to the angel of the church in Philadelphia, write these things, saith he that is holy, he that is true, he that hath the key of David, he that openeth and no man shutteth, and shutteth and no man openeth. I know thy works. Behold, I have set before thee an open door, and no man can shut it, for thou hast a little strength and has kept my word and has not denied my name behold I will make them of the synagogue of Satan which say they are Jews and are not but do lie behold I will make them to come and worship before thy feet and to know that I have loved thee because thou hast kept 
the word of my patience. I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. Behold, I come quickly. Hold that fast which thou hast, that no man take thy crown. Him that overcometh will I make a pillar in the temple of my God, and he shall go no more out, and I will write upon him the name of my God, and the name of the city of my God, which is New Jerusalem, which cometh down out of heaven from my God, and I will write upon him my new name. He that hath an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith unto the churches. Okay, I'm reading from 2 Thessalonians chapter 2, and this relates to the Antichrist topic. Now we beseech you, brethren, by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, and by our gathering together unto him, that ye be not soon shaken in mind, or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letter, as from us. As, as that the day of Christ is at hand. Let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except there come a falling away first. And that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Who opposeth and exalteth himself above all that is called God. Or that is worship. So that he... As God sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was yet with you, I told you these things. And now ye know what withholdeth that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. Only he who now letteth will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall that wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth, and shall destroy with the brightness of his coming, even him whose coming is after the working of Satan, with all power and signs and lying wonders, and with all deceitful and with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in them that perish, because they receive not the love of the truth, that they might be saved. And for this cause, God shall send them strong delusion, that they should believe a lie, and that they all might be damned who believed not the truth, but had pleasure in unrighteousness. But we are bound to give thanks always to God for you, brethren beloved of the Lord, because God hath from the beginning chosen you to salvation through sanctification of the spirit and belief of the truth. Wherefore, whereunto he called you by our gospel to the obtaining of the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, brethren, stand fast, hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by word or our epistle. Now our Lord Jesus Christ himself and God, even our Father, which hath loved us and have given us everlasting consolation and good hope through grace. Comfort your hearts and establish you in every good word and work. So Dak will bring the Cowboys up to go for the two-point try. It's coming now. They'll try and run it up the middle. And just a short gain that time as they're able to get him down. Well, they couldn't be happy that they were having to stop a two-point conversion because that means they gave up a touchdown. But a little solace there. You saw some good gang tackling stacking him up before he can get to the end zone. We talk about offensive units putting in more two-point period sessions in practice. Defensively, do you do the same? Absolutely. You have to because you never know how aggressive these offenses are going to be in games nowadays. The Eagles offense now gets set to head back onto the field. And tough to win games if you're going field goal, field goal, field goal here. They got field goal last time. Now they'll be looking for a touchdown. They're looking for the big chunk now because, as you noted, the field goal, field goal, field goal way of doing it makes it that much harder and puts more pressure on every possession for you now. Go ahead and get six and feel a lot more comfortable about the position they're in. Bigger chunks. We'll see if they can get the score. Escaping the pressure right. And this is going to be incomplete. 
What's the old adage? Be quick, but don't hurry. Well, that went right out the window there. He was hurried, harassed. <laughs> that ball had to be getting rid of. Otherwise, he was going to get sacked. Following the incomplete pass, here they go again. Second and 10 from the 25. Back to the air on second down. Wins. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. They'll wind up getting 10 back as that sets him up for third down. The last catch nearly got him a first, but it did not. And they'll try to convert on third and inches. Working from the gun, Wentz. Going long here for Wallace. That's caught at the 25. And he just falls short down at the one yard line. They're able to convert on third down and that sets up a first and goal. Well, partner, I'm not sure how this drive's gonna end, but how about the way they flip field position there? A nice attacking play. They picked up a heck of a chunk of yardage. And that's gonna be caught for an Eagles touchdown. Mike Wallace from a yard out. There the Eagles are back with it a score. On those slants, everything happens so quickly. What makes it work? The timing between the passer and the receiver. In this case, a slant route. Ordinarily, it's probably about three steps before you go on the slant. In this amount of time, I think it was a two-step deal. Boom, put his foot in the ground and got inside for the pass. Got inside for the pass, got inside for the catch and the score. Elliott now to kick this one away. This will be taken in at the one. And he's up across the 25 and down at the 28-yard line. And now Dallas gets set to take the field. So Prescott of the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 28-yard line. Here's Prescott. He's going to loft one deep left side here. It's caught inside the 25. Touchdown, Cowboys. Jameis Olawale, 72 yards. And the Cowboys are able to show off their quick strike ability. Well, Brandon, if we go back to our meeting with the offensive coordinator, he showed us his script. Didn't show us everything now. He said, here's the script for the game. I think everything's going according to plan in a big way. Three drives, three touchdowns. Yeah, that's about as good. As, that is as good as you can do, I guess. So, well done. Yeah, well done indeed. Tremendous execution. Point after, right down the middle. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. The Eagles coming out as they get ready. I guess they have to feel a little gratified to at least get on the board last time, but still work to do. No doubt about it. I wonder now if they're going to try to increase the urgency a little bit, maybe pump up the pace, maybe go two-minute. Who knows? Let's see what they decide to do. First down, Wentz. And he's going to lose a yard or two, taken down behind the line. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because line, I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Wentz to throw on second down. Going long here for Wallace. And it's caught inside the 30. And he finally goes down not before reaching the 21. A big play there for Philly. 54 yards. Back live with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. It's the Eagles with the ball here to begin quarter number two. And they've got it here with a first down. We're good. 
Shotgun now for Wentz. He couldn't quite hold it. Got hit. Ball pops out. Incomplete. You get a tight end like this, and you know he's used to dishing out punishment, but here, he's one that has to absorb the contact, and as a result, unable to hold on to the football. From the 21, it's second and 10. Run, run. Wentz again here on second and ten. That is caught inside the five. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. First catch so far for Tate, and he's got a first down. Again, they'll throw with Wentz. Flushed out, and he's going to have to eat this one as down he goes. I'm starting to feel for that quarterback back there. I mean, you know me. Normally, don't have a lot of empathy for the QB, right? In this case, definitely. He's been on constant duress this entire game. I don't know how he's surviving back there. And to think, there's still a long way to go in this football game. And this is going to be intercepted. A great read, and it's picked off. And a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Brandon, this is why golfers do their best to never count a score in their head before the ball goes in the cup. This looked like a slam dunk for points on this drive, didn't it? Instead, they throw an interception, and they're going to come away empty. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 20-yard line. Now it's Jackson. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Right off the bat, it's a first down to start the drive, 12 yards. A good run there off right tackle in an old-school NFL football. The right side of the offensive line, often known as the nasty side. The left side, usually the technical side. Kind of reminds me of the old Atlanta Falcons 2009-2010. That's how they constructed their offensive line. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. And now with the play clock winding down, Jason Garrett opts to take a timeout. They'll have two remaining as we step aside here in this second quarter. They go play action here on first down. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. Play action is supposed to be used to slow down pressure, slow down blitzes. In this case, though, if it takes a little too long to develop, you got people right in your face. And lucky just to get rid of the ball with the arm going forward. Could have been a fumble. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. A second down throw for Prescott. Wide open, Amari Cooper. And able to rip off a big chunk of yardage before being dropped inside the 40. A really good pickup of 28 yards. First down, Prescott. He's going to loft one deep left side here. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. And that's one he's got to be happy to have back. There wasn't a hole open in the zone. You'd have to think on early downs like that first down there, need to be a little bit more careful. Yeah, fortunately for him, got a couple more downs to play with.
So that'll back him up five. After the delay of game, they're operating behind the stick, second and 15. To the air again, Prescott. On the right side, this is Austin with a catch. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A very solid gain of 27. A first down carry by Elliott. And he'll get this one down to about the 17. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Two minutes remain here in the first half. We'll come back to Philadelphia after this. And now with the play clock winding down, Jason Garrett opts to take a timeout. So that means they're down to one remaining here as we head toward halftime. Prescott now on second down. It's complete to Brown, right side. And they're going to lose some on this play. Being knocked back to the 18. It'll be a loss of one, and that's going to lead to a third and 11. Prescott from the gun. And incomplete. The contact made the ball run free and brings up fourth down. The beauty of being able to play a zone defense when you can sit back and see the ball coming out of the quarterback's hands, guess what? Creates a lot of confusion. Kind of a muddle in the middle of the field where you go make a play on the football. And he missed it. It's no good. And this score will stay right where it is. Well, this winds up in empty possession. Everything looked okay. He just never got the ball on target. And knowing him, he'll be disappointed with that effort. They go back to the air here after the INT on the last drive. And he will go down. A Cowboy sack. Randy Gregory in there to get him his second sack now of the afternoon. Now Wentz throwing on second down. Throw right side taken in by Wallace. And they're going to get this beyond the 40 before he's taken down. And a nice gain of 21 yards. So in the second quarter, he's already up over 100 yards receiving now. And isn't 100 the magic number for a really good game for a receiver? So he got a chance to really shatter that and have a profound effect on this game. A gain of 32 that time. There will always be a place for methodically marching the ball downfield. But when you can pick it up in big chunks 
and strike like that, have explosive plays, that's often the difference in winning and losing. Those types of plays that can knock a defense off balance, that'll drive a team towards a victory. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. Into the red zone, wins. That's complete, right around the eight. And before the second down play, we'll get a whistle, a signal, and a timeout. As they stop it with 16 seconds to go in half number one. Six yards was the pickup on the last completion, so here's second and four. Now, once again, this is taken in by Jeffrey. He's got it. Touchdown, Eagles. Alshon Jeffrey as the first half is winding down. And the Eagles have cut it back within a score. Elliott now to add the extra point. Elliott good on the extra point. And the lead is down to a field goal. Elliott now to kick this one away. And this will not be returnable. It's out of the back of the end zone for a touchback. And now here come the Cowboys. And with time quickly fading here in the second quarter, not sure how aggressively, offensively they want to play this. I think we'll find out just how much they trust their guys in this situation if they decide to take a shot. Now a play fake here on first down. He's going to loft one deep left side here. And that's caught inside the 30. Touchdown, Cowboys. Three touchdown passes now for Dak Prescott. And the Cowboys are able to show off their quick strike ability. And that's a lead that excites a team as they head into the half. Good way to finish things off. Yeah, able to extend that lead, and you always say it, that can totally change the complexion of half number two. Yeah, it changes your morale, changes your outlook. But even before that, let's see if they decide to kind of squib kick or what they're going to do on the kickoff because you don't want to give up a big play right before the half ends. Good point. They're going to try and run. And after all that, he's going to get back to the line of scrimmage and no more. So the defense gets the stop. I know it's situation to situation, but who has more pressure there, offense or defense, when they go for two? I, st I truly believe it's the defense has more pressure because the offense has an entire playbook wide open from the two-yard line. You can run it. You can throw it. So defensively, I think most teams are going to be aggressive and force the issue and try and bring pressure. And out now come the Eagles. And from this spot in the field with the clock where it's at, you think we're just going to see a knee and that's it? And I think in this situation, that's the proper play. But we do know there's some risk takers out there that may want to take one more shot before the clock runs out. Now Wentz. And he's going to go down. Couldn't get a throw off with the pressure. Maybe that was for the best, as that brings us to the end of this first half of play. So we have reached halftime here with the visiting Cowboys out on top as we are off to Orlando now to check in with Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach? All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. This one fielded at the five. Oh, nice move. <laughs> then he'll take this across the 25, couple extra yards up to the 27 yard line out come the Eagles now as they'll go on offense first here in the third quarter they're down here but very much in this game what's the tonality of a coach's talk when a game is within striking distance like this at intermission typically what they're doing is emphasizing the things that went well in the first half and wanting more of that sure you've got to go over some of the errors and clean up some things because there's a reason you're down but overall, I think they want to stay positive, stay up with this team. We're just starting the second half. If we've got the football, let's go ahead and punch it in, and then we'll take it from there. See how that recipe works. And Eagle first down there, Wentz to Ertz, and the names that end in TZ. 
When an offense reads blitz, it doesn't matter where it's coming from, tight ends know that they become a big part of the passing game because there should be an easy outlet when all those extra bodies are trying to get to the quarterback. A hot route, so to speak. Wentz finding his favorite receiver, Jeffrey, on a big one. And even 40 yards. From the red zone now, Wentz. This will be caught just inside the 10. And he is into the end zone. Touchdown, Philadelphia. Alshon Jeffrey, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Eagles are back with it a score. Elliott on for the extra point. A little surprising they wouldn't go for two, but this is up and good. And the lead is down to two. Elliott now to kick this one away. And they will not get a chance to return this one as it's through the end zone for a touchback. The Cowboys offense now, they head out for their first possession of the second half. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. To throw is Prescott. On the crossing route, he hits his man, Amari Cooper. A big play here for Dallas. And even 60 yards. As we continue to advance in the NFL, as people continue to scout players, they really don't care as much about body types as they care about those guys who can make people miss, run through tackles, and gain all that additional run after catch. Anybody who has that ability, they want them on their team. Line of scrimmage moves from their own 25 all the way to the red zone now for first and 10. Now they'll run it on the toss. He takes this down to about the 12 for a gain of three. I like the call. Inside the red zone running the toss. Why? They want to get to the edges. They want to see if guys who don't normally make a lot of tackles are willing to actually do that. That usually means the guy's in the cornerback position. Second down, Prescott. And this will be incomplete. It was the veteran safety, Malcolm Jenkins, who got a hand in there to disrupt it. All defenders get tired of hearing about their lack of hands and why they're playing defense instead of offense. But in this situation, it was the hands that made the play. Batting the ball away on an attempted touchdown pass. Excellent job. Way to knock it down. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Out of the gun. Here's Prescott. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Dak Prescott now four touchdown passes on the afternoon. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. Now they'll line up to kick the extra point. Extra point right down the middle. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And he'll take it past the 25 and up to the 28-yard line. Philadelphia getting set to take the field. They did what they had to do to start this third quarter, went down, got the touchdown to cut the lead, but the matching touchdown a moment ago, and we're right back where we started at halftime. Yeah, you're exactly right, partner. They had a little bounce in their step after scoring that first touchdown, but the defense gave one up. And that's the problem right now. Can they get better play from their defense while they continue to score on offense? 
Seven yards on the pickup there, and it'll leave him with a second and three. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid game. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing right, and run right, fits right. and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. They stay on the ground. Again, it's a giant. And he'll be brought down shy of the 40 at the 38-yard line. Only three there on the pickup, but that's enough to move the chains. So many teams want to throw the ball in this situation nowadays, but I love watching a team that has enough confidence to go ahead and run the football in that situation. That's almost a tendency breaker. A good pickup there. Eight yards on the first down completion. On play action, Wentz. The ball popped in the air and intercepted. Cheetah Bay Awuzie with a pick. Both defenses have had their struggles, but they've been good enough to get them this lead and another nice play there to help preserve the lead. It's been a game of punch-counterpunch, hasn't it? All throughout. But this time, the big swing was taken, and it didn't land. Nice play by them on defense. 46. Following the interception, here's Prescott. He'll let it fly for Austin. So they took a shot on first down, but couldn't connect. Sure, that pass was incomplete as they made an attempt to get a big one downfield. But that's okay because the second part of that is if you don't get the completion, at least you've told the defense you're trying to stretch them out a little bit, and they may have to change accordingly. Here's second and 10 now from the 29. Prescott again. Got an open man. It's Michael Gallup. And he's brought down after a very nice gain. And a nice gain of 21 yards. On any given pass play, you never know exactly where your exit points are going to be. On this play, it was flushed to his left, still on the run, able to accurately throw the football for a nice first down. 46, 46. Prescott now from the 50. Eluding the pressure right. He'll let it fly for Austin. That's going to be caught. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Tavon Austin, 50 yards. And the Cowboys turn that interception into a touchdown. And now Jason Garrett electing for his guys to try for two. And again, it's Prescott. And he will get into the end zone to bump the lead up to three scores. So they elect to pass there on the two-point try. Sometimes can prove risky there. It worked out. Yeah, and I love how you bring up that it can prove risky because if you get it intercepted and they return it, that's two points for the defense, but not on that play. This one fielded at the five. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. Here's the Philadelphia offensive unit now as they head out to take over possession. And following the interception, just any interception, are you a little bit more cautious when you start that next drive or no, you just throw that out the window? I think you are. I don't think that there's any way you can run back out there and go, ah, totally didn't affect me. Let's just go ahead and be loose with the football again. You're going to take care of it, but you have to be careful about being too cautious because now you can't run any offense at all. Still want to attack. We'll see how they attack them here. A gain of 11 to kick off the drive, and it's a quick first down. Throwing his wins, and he'll be hit as he releases it, and that'll fall incomplete. Really nice play by the guys on the defensive side of the ball, but for the guys on the offensive line, they're doing a nice job of trying to protect their passer. But when a guy hops in the air and goes airborne to try and knock one away, it's difficult because you can't reach out and grab him. That'll be a holding penalty. So all you're trying to do is make some type of a play on him. And he's going to be intercepted a third time. Cheetah Bay Awuzie with a pick. And he'll bring this all the way up to the 45-yard line. 
so that's back-to-back -back drives where they've thrown an interception. Ordinarily, we look at the offense and say, what's going on with your scheme? Maybe we should look at the defense and just give them a whole lot of credit. They've got them frustrated right now. A first down throw for Prescott. He's going to fire one deep over the middle. And it pops free. The collision there jarred the ball loose and brings up second down. Anytime a defense can sit back in a zone like that, it tends to create a lot of congestion in the middle of the field. Makes it very hard to slot one in. Looked like I-4 at rush hour in your hometown of Orlando, Florida. An absolute mess. Here you go. Throwing again, Prescott on second and ten. He's going to fire one deep, middle of the into a double team, and it's intercepted. Picked off by Rodney McLeod, and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. But they needed a break. They needed to make a play here in the third quarter. Defensively, they did that. Now they got to go quickly and get some points on the board. And the best part is that they made their own break. Taking the ball away. Now they just look at their offense and say, guys, let's go. Come on, capitalize on this one. He's going to take another shot. But his pass is intercepted for the fourth time today. Picked off near the 42. And they will take over possession of the football at their 42-yard line. You hear me laughing, partner, and I'm not laughing at the situation, but sometimes you just get yourself into a rut. It's hard to shake yourself out of it. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 42. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. It's caught inside the 25. A gain of 39 that time. The last drive he threw the pick, but he's not shy. He's going downfield again there. And you can't be, because if you back off after throwing an interception, your whole game plan just goes right out the window, and it makes things easier for a defense. And you and I both know there isn't a quarterback in this league that's any good that doesn't throw an interception occasionally, and they usually bounce back in a big way. I've seen guys throw five and still find a way to win the game in the end. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Well, now they'll try the end around. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. Malcolm Jenkins up to make the stop. And that's one of the reasons you like to blitz even on rundowns. It confuses the blocking assignments. It doesn't allow those offensive linemen to get up to the second level. Second down throw for Prescott. His throw incomplete. I'm going to need some help with this one. How did he miss him? Wide open in the end zone. He's not hurried. He's not hit. And somehow, incomplete? Yeah. What happened? During film study, that's one where he's just going to shake his head, not be able to believe it. Six points go by the wayside on that one. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. From the shotgun, it's Prescott. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back, complete. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Ezekiel Elliott, two catches, two touchdowns here so far. And the Cowboys will extend their lead. No going for two, they'll kick the point after. Extra point splits the uprights, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. And this will be a touchback as that sails over the end line. Here comes Eagle offense now as they get set to take over here. And last time wasn't pretty. One play and an interception. We'll see if they can do better. I want to see if they want to go ahead and throw the ball again now on this drive after what happened on the last one. Throw it on the first play. Give the quarterback some confidence. See what happens. Trying to shake off the interception from the last drive. He'll look to throw. Uh, he's got this almost to the 40 before going out. First play of the drive going for 14 and a first down. So the youngster able to use the legs to pick up the first. And one of my pet peeves when they see this guy play, when Carson Wentz takes off running the football, I always hear people go, oh, he's sneaky athletic. No, he's athletic. Watch him do it. He's an integral part of the quarterback Great run game, and he gets it done very, very well. Yeah, you don't like sneaky athletic, do you? That's no, just no. kind of a jab in the back. Yeah, not when it doesn't apply. I think that's a stereotype that needs to be broken down for him. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. 12 yards there as they move the chains. On first down, Wentz. Escaping the pressure right. And he'll take it down shy of the 45 at the 46. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. Ram, ram, ram. Nice job there defensively. A great time to dial up a blitz. And give him credit under center instead of throwing it away. Actually a pretty good job of getting past the line of scrimmage, not losing yardage. Wide open receiver complete. And he's going to get this inside the 30. That one good for 16, and the drive will continue. 82, 82. Wentz now on first down. Ertz has it left side. And he'll take it into the end zone for an Eagles touchdown. Zach Ertz, 29 yards. And the Eagles make some inroads here on that deficit. Boy, it's nice to have that big, reliable target you can go to. Each and every time. A lot of people see that position as a fallback. Throw it to them when all else fails. Not at all. This guy can make plays, and that's exactly what he just did. Yeah, play here for a touchdown. Well, it's still an uphill battle from here, that's for sure, but that makes it a two-score game. And now we see why teams practice so much on the two-point conversion, why you have more than one play ready, because you may need multiples to throw out a ball game. There's a great example right there. Very short kick. This will be taken by one of the up ends. And they'll be set up with good field position here as he gets this up over the 40-yard line. At some point, we're going to get it through our heads. Special teams, special teams, special teams. The spark that often wins games. So Prescott and the Cowboys now with a first and 10 at their own 43. Prescott. Flush to his right, and he just gets rid of it, throws it away. The wise move there looked like nobody open, now second down. I hope I don't sound too rah-rah on that one, but that's the exact right throw. Either your receiver gets it or no one gets it. Give him a lot of credit for being really precise with it. Got rid of it, no one got it. So second down, still 10 yards to go, ball on the 43. A second down throw for Prescott. To the right side, he's got Cooper. It's complete. And he takes this just a few yards shy of the red zone before going out. A very nice pickup of 33 yards. Well, probably the only thing he did wrong there was go out of bounds, nursing this fourth quarter lead. You want to stay in, eat the clock. Yeah, you got to love the effort, the catch, the extra yardage, but you got to know the situation. Stay in bounds, young man. On the ground, this is Jackson. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. They run again with Jackson. Yeah, not much to speak of there. Maybe a yard down to the 20. This is what happens sometimes when you abandon the running game. It's hard to get back to it because once guys get out of that mentality of firing out and hitting people, hard to get them started again occasionally. Go, go, go. 
On third down, it's Prescott. And he is into the end zone for a Cowboy touchdown. Amari Cooper with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Cowboys will add on to their lead. Time for a break. Back to finish it off on EA Sports after this. Point after, right down the middle. And the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This will be fielded on the back line of the end zone. Now Philadelphia ready to get going on offense again. They're down big here late. I, I don't know. You just one last drive here for pride? Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's Make get out up. of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Nice way to start the drive, a gain of 12 and a first down. Throwing on first is Wentz. Now a desperation throw deep downfield. And nearly another interception. They've been around the ball all game. This defense was definitely alert to the possibility of the deep ball, and they were more than ready for it. They've got the lead fourth quarter. Maybe can expect more passes like that downfield. Wentz now to throw. Oh, he's got a man wide open, complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. Seven catches for him now in this last one, a first down. Wentz now on first down. Able to get away, and he'll get it down to the 47 here. He'll get just a yard on the scramble. It's second down. They're going to need to get up and set in a hurry. He'd had some success as a runner previously on this drive, just not as much space there that time. Yeah, this time when he pulled it down, they were ready for him. So I think he's going to have to fling a few in order to open up that running lane again. Caught by the tight end, Ertz. And brought down, but able to get it to their 30-yard line. They give him 17 yards that time as that'll move the chains. 81, 81. On first and 10, here's Wentz. Under pressure, and he will sacked back at the 38. Taco Charlton in there with pressure yet again, and that's the seventh time they've dropped him here this afternoon. Here's Wentz to throw, and now here is another interception. Picked off at the 17, and a big turnover there as his guys will get the football back. Prescott here to throw. Flushed out right. He'll let it fly for Austin. Into heavy traffic and it's intercepted. Picked off by Sidney Jones. And they are going to set up shop at the 40-yard line. Okay, it's real simple to say from here, but we know that sometimes as a quarterback, you've got to know when to say when and just throw it away. Flushed out to the right, tries to make something out of nothing here, and he winds up floating one downfield. Think it's intercepted. So after the INT, here's Wentz. And down he goes. They bring down Wentz on the sack. And here come the whistles and a timeout with seven seconds left. Now following the sack, they'll look to make amends on a second down and 17. Working from the gun, Wentz. And this is incomplete with a clock showing just three seconds left. He was trying to get it to Zach Ertz that time. Third down here. Brandon, at least there's one bright side to that incompletion. 
What's that? It wasn't an interception. Wow. <laughs> you're, you're a nice guy. That was kind of savage. But correct. No, no pick, just incomplete that time. One final try now for wins. And the Cowboys' pressure gets there this time for the sack. A big offensive explosion helped leading them to victory. And the defensive guys, they're just saying, hey, put those points up every week. We'll just keep winning. They will gratefully accept them, won't they? It makes their job that much easier when they're scoring that many points. Allows them to play with a totally different style and a different flow. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. With that, we say so long from Philly.